Hi, and welcome to Kidney Foundation's Plugged In Show. Joining us today on the show are an extraordinary couple, Patty and JD. Patty is a PKD patient and an outstanding athlete who defied all odds by competing in the Maui to Molokai Outrigger Canoe Race just weeks prior to her scheduled kidney transplant. Her living donor, her husband, JD. Their story is one of hope, love, and triumph, and one that will not only inspire you, but it will warm your heart just in time for Valentine's Day. So please stay with us because you'll meet Patty and JD next, right here on Plugged In. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us on Plugged In. As you can see, it's a beautiful day here in Vancouver. I'm at Burrard Civic Marina, one of the locations for the Faults Creek Racing Canoe Club. We're here to talk to competitive paddler, Patty Lawson, who also happens to be a kidney patient. Welcome, Patty. Hi, Heather, it's nice to be here and welcome to Faults Creek. So this is where Outrigger Canoeing takes place. Yes, it and, is. And the other home of Faults Creek is at uh, Alder Bay at Granville Island. Yes. And that, that solo Outriggers, marathons, dragon boats. Yes, and the Flatwater program as well. And the Flatwater program. So this is kind of unique. Kidney patient, competitive paddler. I'd love to hear your story. I know that you and your family have polycystic kidney disease. Yes. Many of your family members. Can you tell us when you were first diagnosed? I was probably about 20 years old when my mom found out she had polycystic, so the four kids all got tested. Oh, I see. And yeah. what did that, what came of that? hundred uh, <laughs> percent. So the four kids all have polycystic. Wow. Yeah, me being the youngest. Mm-hmm. And your mother, did she go on to have a transplant? She did in 2000. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. And how about your siblings? Uh, all three of my siblings have had transplants now as well. Wow. So I'm the last one, so it's kind of like, ah, uh, number five. Wow. <laughs> So um, trying to find a living donor is a little bit of a challenge when your whole family is affected with kidney disease. Yes. Right. You, um, you tell me that your kidney function has been dropping lately. What is it currently? Uh, my GFR is about 11 now. 11. Yes. And yet, what did you do a couple weekends ago, <laughs> Patty? <laughs> I raced a race called Pailolo, which is from uh, Maui to Molokai, 26 mile race. Wow. That, that's ambitious for anyone and you're functioning with about 10, 11% kidney function. Yeah. Are you having any symptoms of chronic kidney disease? Yeah, I mean, I'm tired a lot. I, um, I get a lot of cramping in my muscles. I feel a bit nauseated sometimes. I, uh, um, fatigue is probably the big one mm -hmm. and the, the cramping, especially when I exercise. So how does fatigue relate to doing a 26 mile outrigger race across open ocean? Mind over matter. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I've been training with this since I've had any decline, so I really think that my body body has sort of become accustomed to mm -hmm. training in this state, I guess you could say. Right. So I actually feel quite well when I paddle. It's usually afterwards that I don't feel so well. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Right. And you exclusively paddle outrigger canoes. Um, I dabble a little bit in flat water because my mm -hmm. kids do flat water, but yeah. Right. Well, now that's the other piece. After you were diagnosed with PKD, yes. you went on to get pregnant yes. and have twins. Yes. Wow. Were there any medical issues during your pregnancy? No, actually, I surprised everybody. Um, the anticipation is that I was going to have a lot of problems, so they got a whole team of people to follow me, which I slowly got rid of piece by piece. Mm -hmm. but. I carried the twins till 39 weeks. I had a natural childbirth. I was out of the hospital in two days. No problems. Wow. And I think you've groomed them to be paddlers as well. Yes. Are they, how old are they now? They're nine. Is that Avalon and Matilda? Matilda. Yes. Wow, that's pretty incredible. Um, you also have a very ambitious career. Yes, I'm a paramedic. Mm hmm And so that can be high stress. Does stress affect your, your health? Um, I've been doing that, it's been almost 20 years, so I, I mean, I don't find it super stressful anymore, I don't think. Mm, cool. It's again, part of my daily life. Right. It sounds strange, but it's like any other job, yeah. you kind of get It'd used to what you do. It'd be if you didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, I suppose there's more emotional stress than physical stress, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if that affects me. I do get tired after a 12 hour shift, because all my shifts are 12s, and wow. there's always overtime on top of it. So. Wow. An average day is 13 hours, which I'm tired by the end of it. Yeah, I can imagine. But I think everyone's tired after a 13-hour mm -hmm. shift, so. What kind of training did you do to be able to do the Maui to Molokai race? 
Um, we train about three days a week in OC6. We have to do change practices um, and we raced all season and the racing is great training as well. So mm -hmm. uh, our last race being nationals in um, October, which was a 22 kilometer race. So Where was that? That was out in Harrison. Oh yes, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a long outrigger season, and so you have lots of opportunity to train. Yes. And is you have done other large canoe races. I know you've done yes. Catalina and Newport Beach to Catalina. Yeah, I've done that race uh, about eight times. Um, mm -hmm. I've done about six or seven in OC6, and I've done it four times in OC1 and OC2. And I've done Molokai, which is the world of outriggers, yes. uh, five times. Um, Hamilton Island in mm -hmm. Australia, I've mm -hmm. done that race a bunch of times. Yeah. Uh, the Gorge every year, which has become quite an international race as well. Paddling is in your blood, for sure. Yes. Well, yeah. my siblings, my sister started me into it, so. Right. I, your sister, I used to paddle with her way back in the early 80s. Yes. So, um, speaking of siblings. Yes. Um, so, your all four, si all three siblings, the four of you, mm -hmm. have polycystic kidney disease. Yes. And there is a sense that um, some of the next generation also carry that gene. Yeah, we've been told that each of our children have a 50% chance yes. of having it. Mm -hmm. But it's an adult onset, so unless we get a genetic testing, we won't know until they're older. Right. Right. So, Patty, your kidney function is down to 10 or 11 percent. I sense maybe there's a transplant in your future. Can you stick around and tell us about that? Sure. Stay with us on Plugged In. We'll be back with Patty. Can you imagine losing most of something without realizing it? Over time, kidney disease can destroy up to 80 percent of kidney function before you notice any symptoms. Talk to your family doctor to see if you're at risk and need to be screened. It could save your life. So you've been assessed to be a transplant recipient through St. Paul's Hospital? Yes, so when they decide it's time, you get assessed to be a recipient, and I had a live donor, so he goes through lots of process to assess if he's an appropriate donor and if we're a match. Mm -hmm. And who is that? My husband, JD. Oh, that's fantastic. Do you have a transplant date? Yes, October 28th. That's very exciting. Have you been told that you need to change your activity level or your lifestyle at all leading up to a transplant? Um, they said that I really need to be careful about staying healthy. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't 100% thrilled about me going to race in Hawaii, but they didn't tell me I couldn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe I didn't hear that part. <laughs> oh, I see, You're right, selective hearing. Yeah. Uh -huh. So transplant on October 28th, that's fantastic. Yes. Have they told you how, what your recovery period would look like? Um, they say three to six months of because I have to go to clinic and um, manage my medications and mm -hmm. stay away from bugs and not get sick. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm hoping that the recovery from the surgery will be much shorter than that so right. I can get back on the water. Uh -huh. Have they given you a sense of when you might be able to get out on the water? Not yet, that's actually something I need to ask, but I'm hoping about four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a negotiation. Yes. <laughs> well, it's getting busy around here. Paddlers are showing up. You're going to hit the, uh, the sea in yes. an outrigger canoe, and we'll be right back. Down at the water, looks like a whole whack of hardy bus chickens here. I see Kamini's here. Are you a hardy bus chicken? I am a hardy bus chicken. And how long have you been paddling, Kamini? I've been paddling for a good, like over 30 years. I believe you went to the Olympics. I did. I went in yeah. 2000, 2004. Wow. Tell us about Patty Lawson. You've paddled with her for a while. I have. I've paddled with Patty for a long time. What um, races have you done? We've done Molokai, which is the biggest uh, outrigger race in the world. Mm -hmm. We've done lots of local stuff. We've done the race from Cal in California that goes from the mainland to Catalina mm -hmm. a few times. Right. Um, were you on the team okay. in Maui recently? I was not. Oh, no. you missed that one. I missed that one. The one event you didn't do. That's all right. Yeah. There'll be others. Okay. There'll be others when Patty's right. even stronger after her new kidney. Oh, yes. That's October 28th. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to steer this Motley crew, Judy? I am.
Okay. Okay, paddles up, take it away. So Dave, coach boat driver extraordinaire, <laughs> what are we looking at here with this team? Well, it's a, it's a regular Monday night practice. It's just after six o'clock, the sun's just going down, but it's a really calm night out here. We're in English Bay and just doing a slow, steady distance paddle. The, the paddlers are in an outrigger canoe, which is a Polynesian craft. It's about 42 feet long, with an outrigger on the side for stability. Paddlers paddle on both sides, alternating sides about every 15 strokes. So they'll take 15 strokes on one side, and then there'll be a call on the boat to coordinate everybody, and they all switch sides and paddle another 15 strokes, repeat again. So it's a nice balanced sport, yeah, not absolutely. like dragon boat. Yeah. It's a distance paddle, it's not a sprint that most people are familiar with dragon boating, which is a, a 500 mm -hmm. meter, 750 meter race. Uh, our races are generally 10K, 15K, 20 kilometers long. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, uh, it, it's a longer race, an hour to two hours is generally what a race takes. That wraps up a lovely evening on the water. We're going to leave Patty out with the Hardy Bus chickens and we're going to catch up with her later post-transplant. Well, two and a half months have now passed since Plugged In first caught up with Patty Lawson while training with her outrigger canoe team, the Hardy Bus chickens. That was at the Burrard Civic Marina, which is one of the homes of the Falks Creek Racing Canoe Club. At that time, Patty, who has polycystic kidney disease, was end stage and awaiting a kidney transplant. But as we heard, that wasn't stopping her from doing anything, including competing in the annual outrigger canoe race between the islands of Maui and Molokai, Hawaii. That's a 26 mile stretch of open ocean. A lot has happened since that first interview, most notably is the kidney transplant that Patty received from her husband and living donor, JD, on October 28, 2019. Now they're both two and a half months post-surgery and we're here at their home to talk to them both, Patty and JD, about their kidney transplant journey. Thanks so much for inviting us into your home, you guys. Thanks for coming. How are things? Great, everything's going well. Both feeling really good. Right, well take us back to a few weeks before your transplant. 
Um, was there preparation that you both had to do in order to have surgery? Um, there was, I went for a lot of testing beforehand. Um, they had to do final blood work, antibody work, um, a few scans, you know, chest x-rays, things that you do before any surgery. Um, there was also house preparations. We have two kids, so lots of shopping, lots of cooking, putting it in the freezer, making sure we had childcare taken care of, kids getting to school, that sort of stuff. And you have uh, two young daughters? Yes, I have nine-year-old twins, Avalon and Matilda. Wow, so both of you undergoing surgery and you've got two children at home. Yes. Yeah. So, Patty, you had lots of tests uh, leading up to surgery. What about you, JD, as a living donor? Leading up to surgery, I really didn't have anything. Uh, it was all done previous. Mm -hmm. I just had to show up for the surgery. Which just was... take a bus and go to St. Paul's. <laughs> no, my sister-in-law drove me to the, mm -hmm. the hospital and right. she waited with me. So yeah. It was nice. And in fact, is the process that you were told that you were a match for Patty, and then it was up to you to let her know that it was a go for surgery? Yeah, I even actually knew the date before Patty did, before and I, I kind of surprised her mm -hmm. to let her know what day it was. Right. So, so October 28th. Yes. Yeah, so leading up to that, lots of tests. Mm -hmm. um, what happened when you guys got to the hospital? So that morning, uh, my sister was staying with us. He, she actually drove JD to the hospital. I got the kids ready to school, sent them over to the neighbor to take them to school, and then I took the bus down to the hospital. Um, he was supposed to be in surgery by the time I got there, but they were delayed by a couple hours, so. Only because they had a, another kidney transplant uh, emergency before us. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. perhaps a deceased donor uh, yes. had a very transplant. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we hung out together, waiting, and then he went off to surgery, and I waited for about three and a half hours with my sister, and then they told me things went well. He was out. They were cleaning the room, and I was going in. Wow. Tense times. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And how long were you in recovery then, JD? Uh, downstairs, I would say about a couple hours. A couple hours. And how about you, Patty? Honestly, it's a bit of a blur, but I think I was there about four hours. I, he, JD was there when I re got there. I vaguely remember he whistled and I looked open one eye and saw him and then he left and, and then I kind of slept. The girls came to visit me quickly. I was kind of in and out of consciousness and about 11 o'clock that night went up to the room. Oh. And it was great because I actually, uh, for the first time after surgery, I stood up to meet her at the door when she got wheeled, wheeled by. How many hours after surgery would that have been? I was uh, 11 hours after 11 surgery. 11 hours after, you were on your feet. So you get home, you're out of the hospital, two people post-surgery with young children. How did that work here at the house? It was great actually, our kids were super helpful. The first morning that we were both home was Saturday morning and the two girls made a menu for us and cooked us breakfast. Yep. So we had scrambled eggs. Did you know they had uh, cooking skills like that? Uh, they hadn't done a lot of cooking before this, but since they've actually done much they more. stepped up. Yeah. yeah. They stepped up a lot. Yeah. yeah. My sisters had stayed here during the week to help look after them and then um, to look after JD the first day. Mm -hmm. And then the girls took over. And, and we had lots of friends, big community of paddling and, and other parents that uh, stopped by with food and to take the girls out for play dates. Mm -hmm. And so JD laid on one couch and I laid on the other covered in blankets just watching Netflix. Wow, <laughs> it sounds like ideal situation. <laughs> Maybe everyone should get a kidney transplant. Yeah, lots, of, qu kidney. lots of quality time spent together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, that's what it's about. And then we would go for walks uh, about 20, 30 minutes at a time just to mm -hmm. keep the blood flowing and mm -hmm. then come back and, and hunker down in our bed or couches again. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you were off work for how long? I was off work for eight weeks. Eight weeks. Yes. And I hear that your kind employer covered you for that time. Yes, my employer so covered me salary. for a living donor program. Living donor program, yes, right. So if you're awesome. a liver donor or a kidney donor, bone marrow, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's fantastic. So I got the full eight weeks yeah. off and I was here helping Patty and mm -hmm. we did a lot of household chores and mm -hmm. stuff that we wanted to get done. Wow. And when will you go back to work then? Uh, probably about mid-February. So they say three months off is kind of the minimum. Mm -hmm. And then based it on how everything's going. Mm -hmm. uh, my function's really good. A couple bumps in the road, nothing to be mm -hmm. too worried about. But they want to make sure that my immunity is strong because I go back to a job where there's lots of risk for me in that sure. sense. Right. We'll remind people that you're a paramedic. Um, when did you get back out on the water, Patty? 
uh, beginning of December. So we had our six week follow up with the surgeon mm -hmm. and he told us that he wouldn't normally let people get back out that quickly but because we were pre previously athletes um, and medical professionals that we knew the difference between good pain and bad pain. So it felt like bad pain, like a hernia, don't do it. If it's good pain, then go for it. Mm. And so. how much pain were you in when you battled? Actually, almost none. I felt better than I did before the surgery because I felt pretty bad before and was paddling anyways. So going out, it was like, wow, I feel good. Yeah. My breathing's great. My muscles feel strong. Mm -hmm. I'm not tired. So wow. big difference. Right. So that was the question. How is your health post kidney transplant and really? you just kind of answered it. Yeah. The fatigue is gone and you feel sort of more robust, do you? Yeah, so the big thing I noticed, especially athletically, is that before I always had sore muscles, whether I'd done a hard workout or not, just I think the lactic acid wasn't clearing, mm -hmm. my kidney wasn't doing what its mm -hmm. job was. Now I feel super good, mm -hmm. um, I don't have any fluid buildup anymore, so my breathing is much better, mm -hmm. my brain is more clear, I'm not sort of foggy all the time. Mm -hmm. So. You know, I'm not getting gout, I'm not all those other things that come along with kidney failure, right? Wow. So yeah, it's great. Okay, that's great. Stay with us, we'll be back shortly to talk more with Patty and JD about their kidney journey. Now we've heard about these girls, Matilda, Avalon. Hi. Hi. Now tell me what it was like to have both of your parents in the hospital. Well, it was kind of scary to like not know what's happening. Well, like anything could happen. It's mm -hmm. kidney transplant, I guess. Mm-hmm, that's right. I kind of felt like dad, I was pretty proud of daddy for giving mommy a kidney. Mommy a kidney and yeah, I was really proud, but just all these emotions, like nervous, excited, scared, happy, <laughs> just, mm -hmm. just like went into my body, I'm like, uh, <laughs> I was pretty confused. It's hard to know how everything's going to work out. Work out. Yeah. yeah. It's a very loving thing your father did. You got to visit them in the hospital? Yeah, our aunt took us to the hospital basically every night to go visit them. And mommy was like vaguely awake every mm -hmm. time. He's like, hi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and daddy was like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then your father came home first? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he came home and then our aunt Barb took us trick-or-treating with our friends and we came home and Dad was still there. So then you're, both your parents come home and I understand they sort of took over the living room. Your mother was on one couch, your father was on the other, you guys were relegated to the floor, is that right? Well, not really because like sometimes Maddie could sit on Mommy's legs, I could sit on Daddy's leg, or the reverse, or mm -hmm. like they would make room for us. Oh, I hope you got video of that. <laughs> Not really. Selfies? No? Not really. <laughs> and then um, I also heard that you made breakfast for them. What did you make? Uh, we made toast and eggs, scrambled mm -hmm. eggs, and the first day we made like this little menu book of choices oh. of breakfast that we can make. and. Wow, had you ever cooked for your parents before? Um, like me, I, I cooked um, lunches after that, some, mm. and we, we made um, shepherd's pie for our first dinner. And oh, that, yes. well they were lucky to have you, my goodness. <laughs> so girls, how many kidneys does your mother have in her body right now then? Three. Three, and how many work? Uh, one? Yeah. <laughs> and how many kidneys does your father have? One. Because he gave one away. So it all averages out. They yeah. each have two, really. <laughs> That's fantastic. We're back with Patty and JD. JD, tell us a little more about your decision to become a living kidney donor. Uh, the decision to be a donor for Patty wasn't a decision at all. It was more of a, I knew she had PKD when I met her and when I married her. So it was just, it wasn't a matter of when, it was just, or if it was a matter of when. Mm -hmm. um, but five years ago, I actually got tested for my sister-in-law mm -hmm. to get test, uh, to donate for her. But the doctors decided that it was actually more important for Patty to get it, so I waited. Um, so yeah, the testing kind of went around twice and I found out how he healthy my kidneys were, and it was just a no-brainer. 
mm -hmm. to give to Patty. You do learn a lot about your own health when you go through assessment as a living potential kidney donor. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's kind of an eye-opener of, of a little bit of how well you, you have and will take care of your body. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, it was good. It was easy, non-invasive testing. Mm -hmm. So there was a couple fun ones, the, the nuclear tests, but um, mm -hmm. that was... That was nothing. And you were a perfect match. Uh, enough to to start the process and and get going, but unless I was her blood relative, it, it wasn't a perfect match. Mm -hmm. Great. So it's uh, we see that a lot. That it's uh, people marry well. You know, yeah. you married well. Um, yeah. So many times, spouses are a match for for each other, yeah. and it, it works out really well. We're what they call a mismatch. So our blood type was a match, but the proteins on our blood type is opposing and there's always the risk having kids that we um, I could have antibodies against him already because we've had kids so that's just something that they watch. So how does this affect a marriage relationship when one person gives a kidney to another? Uh, on my end it's just a little bit stronger I mean we had a lot of time after surgery to be w with each other uh, recovering with each other and it's um, it's brought us a little closer and not many people can say they spent two months at home with their partner. That's just not real life. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been good. I always have a piece of him with me. That's so lovely. <laughs> Whether it's for the good or yeah. the bad, I don't know. <laughs> now, you two are both very athletic people. I understand you're going to be training for a triathlon. A uh, half iron in uh, November in Cabo. Wow, okay. Yes. So and training has really ramped up. Mm -hmm. So living, even living with a one kidney and mm -hmm. training that hard is... Is not a problem. Not a problem. Plus, we're also training for outrigger uh, champs. Um, Patty's training for uh, worlds in Hawaii mm -hmm. in November mm -hmm. with her crew. Yeah. So just because I have one kidney and she has PKD doesn't mean that we're on the sidelines anymore. Yeah. And you're turning 50 this year, and to yes. celebrate, what are you doing? Uh, well, I think our, our mixed crew, we're going to go to San Francisco and race um, around Alcatraz, mm -hmm. one race I haven't done. And I'm going to do Molokai, which is the worlds of our sport. And uh, when you turn 50, you get to have 12 women instead of 10 to do the 48-mile crossing yeah. or whatever it is. Oh. Um, so I'm getting the old band back together, so mm -hmm. to speak, and racing a bunch of women that I've raced with over the years. Right, so, so everyone be... needs to be over 50. Yes, yeah. yeah. So oh, I was nice. actually the baby of this group, so everyone is already over 50. So oh, finally okay. I'm 50, yeah. I have a new knee and a new kidney, and off we go. Wow, <laughs> so, that amazing. Yeah. Patty and JD, your story is one of love and hope and inspiration and health. Uh, thank you for sharing it with our Plugged In viewers on this special Valentine's Day episode. Our pleasure. Thank you. Now, I understand you're both paddlers as well. Are these yeah. awards you've received? Yeah. Yes. And what are these awards? These are mine and those are Matilda's. They're both, um, they're all three or five, whatever number they are, but mm -hmm. um, they're all athlete, athlete of the year. Athlete for like, from the False Creek Racing Canoe Club? Yeah, for like progress or something like that. Wow. What kind of paddling do you do, Matilda? Uh, we do ca sprint kayak, and in the summer we sometimes do high yield canoe. Wow, so this is called um, flat water paddling. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Excellent. And you've been paddling since you were? Five was our first canoe camp. Five was your first canoe camp. Wow, well, no wonder you're experts at it now. This is amazing. We also did Outrigger also. Outrigger too, yeah, and just like your mom and just like your dad. Well, wow, it's yeah. a paddling family. And yeah. everybody's happy and healthy and carrying on. That's a good news story. We'll be right back with Patty. See you on the water. Yeah. We oh. do it one more time that oh. Patty responds. Patty's going to say, see, see, you on, see you on the water. Here we are with Avalon and Matilda. Hi. I'm supposed to say hi. 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 Okay, you had one line. Oh you had one line. It's not DJ. I know, I think he's <laughs> Now you're messing me up. All right. Okay. She's always a part with me now. So what's going to be happening is Patty's going to be getting another boat. So that's going to be Okay. See if she gets it.